Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Preliminary analysis on the new strain of COVID-19 shows no greater threat to public health. The Republic of France pledges continued assistance to St. Lucia in the battle against climate change. And the Make It Happen Foundation's largest donation yet. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has noted the public concern about the reported new strain of the novel coronavirus. On December 14, 2020, the United Kingdom Public Health Agency reported a variant of SARS-CoV-2 in 1,108 individuals. The newly identified strain has been in circulation since September 2020 in the United Kingdom. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George in a statement informed that the ministry remains in dialogue with international and regional partners on the preliminary analysis. There is no indication at this point of increased severity or harmfulness associated with this new variant or any challenges it shall pose to the effectiveness of the vaccines currently available. Preliminary guidance has been received from the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, and the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. The public health team at the Ministry of Health and Wellness is reviewing all information in relation to this new threat in consultation with our international and regional public health agencies to guide the way forward in reducing the possible impact to our country. This situation further proves the importance of strict adherence to all protocols recommended to reduce transmission of the virus. There is need for maintaining and even increasing our vigilance at all levels where risks have been identified. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization, WHO, says it is monitoring the situation in the UK. Experts have been reviewing data for a detailed analysis on the new variant. Dr. Maria Van Kokov is the WHO's technical lead for COVID-19. What they're trying to also do is look at what is associated with this variant and what is associated with people's behavior in terms of the interventions and applying and, and complying with the interventions that are in place. Could be the variant, a combination of the behavioral factors or, and both. Um, and so that's what they're looking at right now. We expect more analysis and results from our colleagues in the UK over the coming days, um, coming weeks, as they continue to look at this. They're also doing some epidemiologic investigations of individuals with this variant compared to those without this variant. They're doing detailed studies of patients in hospitals to look at the, the clinical course and, and severity. But again, we have no indication that there's a change in uh, disease presentation or mortality. So that's good news. And then there's more studies of the neutralization. Of particular interest to the WHO is the reproduction rate of the SARS-CoV-2 variant against established interventions. We don't have any indication that it's changed how it spreads, meaning like it, it, it's a respiratory pathogen. So it spreads between me and you through these particles in the air. Some are big called droplets, some are small called aerosols. But mainly what is happening is that the virus spreads between people who are in close contact with another. That's still the same. Um, there are detailed epi investigations that are underway and we will let you know if anything in that space changes, but the virus likes people who are in close contact with one another. So when we say there are things that you need to do with your physical distancing, you're wearing a mask, you're washing your hands, all of that remains true in terms of protecting yourself and protecting the ability of you to spread from somebody else. The WHO says thus far there have been single cases of the new strain reported in Australia Iceland, Italy, and Denmark. The curtains have come down on the 31st edition of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, with organizers and participants satisfied with the staging of the nautical competition amid the challenges of COVID-19. Jesse Leos reports. Events company St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority brought the ARC Plus 2020 crews together to mark the end of their six-week-long ocean adventure with a special prize-giving ceremony held at the IGY Rodney Bay Marina. Visiting the stage to collect prizes included those who sailed quickly and tactically, 
as Telewego from Great Britain claimed line honours for leg two from Mindelo to Rodney Bay and on corrected time, River Café from Luxembourg topped the multi-hull division and Bohemian from Norway placed first in the cruising division. The smallest boat in the fleet, Parker 335 to Huabahu from Germany, covered the well-navigated shortest distance of 2,092.5 nautical miles, whilst TY Pier 3 from France, a Beneteau Oceanis 51.1, sailed the most miles of 2,326 nautical miles. Special awards were also given to the six yachts sailed by a double-handed crew and the SSB net controllers who have been at the heart of the ocean crossing community by running the daily radio net. The fleet's adventures have been followed by thousands of fans, and this year the best boat log photo went to Cloudy Bay from Norway for sharing a beautiful picture of a magnificent blue marlin, which was released shortly after the picture was taken. Best overall log went to Dave Bishop on Tohu Wahabu, who described their story of how they asked and received fuel in the middle of the Atlantic from a 130-mile tanker. Each year, a special crew or individual is identified to receive the ARC Plus Spirit of the Rally Award. Chosen by the World Cruising Club Yellow Shirt Team, it is presented to someone who has significantly contributed to their fellow participants' experience. And this year, it was actions in port that were recognized. Prior to departure from Mindelo, delays with PCR tests caused problems for the fleet's departure, and Anders and Gunea Ullmann from the yacht Idalir 2 from Sweden were able to share their knowledge, commitment, and connections to assist with resolving the situation. Andrew Bishop, Managing Director of World Cruising Club, was unable to attend this year, but sent a message of congratulations and thanks to all the fleet and organizers of the rally. It's a great pleasure to know that all of you have safely arrived in St Lucia and are now about to enjoy an evening to celebrate your fantastic achievement of crossing the Atlantic this November and December with Art Plus. Thank you for choosing to sail with us this year in these particularly difficult times and I hope now that you can enjoy some time in the Caribbean. Via video message, Minister for Tourism Honourable Dominic Fede commended the participants on their ocean crossing achievements and expressed gratitude to the fleet for contributing to St. Lucia. Congratulations to all of you for making the journey. I mean, that really is special um, to brave your way across the Atlantic. I can never get over this. One of these days, I've been promising I need to try to take a sail. But thank you guys so much for contributing to St. Lucia's economy, contributing to St. Lucia's tourism. And we are very, very excited to um, have you here and um, really hope you're having a great time. The ARC Plus 2020 prize-giving ceremony was held in full adherence to COVID-19 protocols on sea dock of the marina, with an 80-foot catamaran Go Tango providing a platform to host the proceedings. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. The Consulate General of St. Lucia in Martinique, through the Department of External Affairs, has facilitated the donation of Christmas gifts to the pediatric unit of the O.N. King EU Hospital. The gifts were donated by the E-Club Caribe Association, a humanitarian organization based in Martinique. The Foreign Service Officer and Desk Officer for Europe, Shanika Plummer Antoine, speaking on behalf of the Department of External Affairs, says while COVID-19 has had detrimental effects on the livelihoods of many, it has also highlighted the significance of family. In this regard, Christmas is a time for sharing, a time for giving, a time for caring, and also a time for loving. Many families this Christmas, in particular parents, will not be able to afford to give their children a present. However, this token, I believe, will be able to bring joy and happiness to many children. The executive director of OKEU and Respiratory Hospitals, Nancy Francis, who received the donation, expressed immense appreciation for the contribution during such a challenging time. We are very grateful and elated that the Department of External Affairs and the club from Martinique have partnered and today they are here to donate to our children in the pediatrics unit these generous um, gifts. 
And uh, my team, they are there with me, our departmental sister, Sister Maxne, she's extremely excited. And we'll be happy to go to the PITS department to the, um, share the gifts with the children. Ms. Francis also extended gratitude to the E-Club Caribe Association of Martinique. Meantime, diplomatic relations between St. Lucia and the Republic of France deepened with a commitment to combating climate change. Ambassador-designate of the Republic of France to St. Lucia, His Excellency Jacques Henry Yells, expressed his commitment to working with St. Lucia in a number of priority areas. The ambassador, who on the 22nd of December 2020 presented letters of credence to Governor General His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, highlighted priority areas of collaboration, including finance, developing sub regional cooperation between OECS member states and the French territories of the Caribbean, climate change with a view of establishing the best ways of building co finance projects focused on the environment green energy, the fight against sargassum seaweed, waste management, smart digitization, and water treatment, to name a few. Security and defense will be an important field of my mission as well. As you may recall, we had a temporary maritime agreement in November between the St. Lucian Home Affairs Minister and the Vice Admiral Commanding our forces in the Caribbean. Our ambition is to perpetuate and enrich this agreement so that in case of a security or natural disaster crisis, we could without delay act together to work on its consequences. On security matters, combat against terrorism, drug trafficking and illegal immigration is our common goal. Collaboration in the areas of education and culture are also on the agenda of the newly appointed French ambassador. Governor General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, expressed gratitude to the government and people of France for their support, especially during these unprecedented times as the world continues to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite our grief, we are floating on a good wave which can change lives forever. So let us not miss this opportunity to change generations. The people of St. Lucia would no doubt wish me to thank France for her readiness to help as demonstrated by the provision of 40 beds and mattresses to the OKEU hospital. And of course, many other matters. She can be assured of our readiness to add our voice to hers in the councils of the world. St. Lucia and the French continue to share a long mutually beneficial relationship with the French recently coming to St. Lucia's aid, providing much needed supplies and equipment as the island combats the spread of COVID-19. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. An accident on court. Eh eh eh, ni de bef mola, on go to ho, et pi yon bel vache. De machin kwaze, ek moun blesi. Ah, non mese se dam, bagay sa la kan ni pou do bout. Stray animals are endangering human lives and property. Livestock owners, please ensure animals do not stray on roads, highways and public places. Remember, sections of the Animals Act 2005 states, Stray animals will be seized and put in a pound by authorized persons. Owners will be liable to a fine of $5,000 or two years imprisonment or both. Save innocent animals. Save human lives and property. A message from the Department of Agriculture. Welcome back. Police officers and firefighters have been equipped with more resources to stay fit while on the job. In a brief ceremony held at police headquarters Chesterfield, the Make It Happen Foundation handed over exercise equipment to the force and fire service. 
details in this report. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the St. Lucia Fire Service are the beneficiaries of the largest one-time donation made by the Make It Happen Foundation. Commercial-grade fitness equipment valued at $220,000 has been donated to 10 stations to support the welfare of servicemen and women. The 20 items of gym equipment will be distributed equally among the stations. Lady Raquel Dubele chasney is the founder of this charitable organization. COVID has shown us all how invaluable our frontline workers are. And as we all know, physical fitness is a critical attribute for our fire and police officers in particular. So we are very pleased that we were able to have raised sufficient funds from the proceeds of last year's Officers Bowl held in December to be able to purchase and donate such gym equipment. We are aware that the equipment will be well used and used by a large number of officers and we therefore purchased top-of-the-line quality elliptical machines by Precor and Total Gyms, which we are advised should last at least 20 to 25 years each if taken care of. Mrs. Dubele Chasney adds that the donation represents 500 patrons of the last officer's ball, as well as companies from the business sector who pledged their support. This is one of many fundraisers undertaken by the Make It Happen Foundation for several worthy causes. Commissioner of Police Severo Moshery expressed gratitude on behalf of the force and the fire service. I want to take the opportunity again to thank the Make It Happen Foundation and more so Mrs. Um, Shastney because I know you've worked very hard to ensure that we get those gyms and I can assure you that both fire and police will keep this gym not just for 25 years, but for 50 years. And we look forward to your continued support and the support of corporate St. Lucia in assisting both the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the St. Lucia Fire Service. This recent donation of the Make It Happen Foundation brings the total number of stations to be gifted gyms on island to 14, including the police training school located at La Toc. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leons reporting. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS Commission has delivered some 2.16 million EC dollars worth of supplies to member states as they continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. These supplies include personal protective equipment, ventilators, PCR test kits, ICU kits and swabs to name a few. The Commission will now be able to deliver even more with a donation of US$100,000 from the Government of the Federate of the Republic of Brazil to St. Lucia and the OECS. OECS Commission's Head of Human and Social Cluster, Dr. Carlin Radix, said that the funds have been earmarked for the procurement of PCR tests. We were quite happily surprised to get that positive response so quickly with regards to a, an amount of 100,000 US dollars towards testing. And in collaboration with our member states, we agreed that swabs and testing was what was needed at the time, the PCR testing. Further, as was said, we could do the procurement through World Food, Pro Food Program, through PAHO, so that the tests would be the same as the tests that are being used across the region. Um, and so this was an excellent partnership. Of course, there have been difficulties and issues. The swabs came first, and they were donated mm -hmm. across the member states. We didn't have to worry about cold chain and things like that. So swabs, St. Lucia received 1,000 swabs early on, earlier on. But now we, the kits have come in, and 5,000 of the 6,000 kits that the funds have been able to purchase. So we, so we actually have an extra 1,000 that have not yet been procured that Pahua said when they are available, they'll let us know. So we'll know who we'll send to which member state at the time will be most in need. Ambassador of Brazil to St. Lucia and the OECS, His Excellency Anwar Nahiz, commended the Department of Health and Wellness and by extension the Government of St. Lucia for its management of and response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Ambassador explained that despite some challenges, the Government of Brazil is happy to lend assistance to St. Lucia and stands ready to collaborate where necessary. At the same time, my colleagues down there in the Brazilian Cooperation Agency, it's important to be this ABC, 
Agência Brasileira de Cooperação, Brasília, Asian Incorporated, they asked me to tell you that they are ready to do more. So you just, I mean, except, I mean, with the exception of vaccination now, they are ready to consider and to send whatever you, you just make as a list, like masks or uh, this equipment, I don't know the technical term. <laughs> yes. And uh, they said they'll be ready to share with you, St. Lucia, bilaterally or through uh, OECS. Executive Director at the ON King EU Hospital, Nancy Francis, expressed gratitude for the assistance. I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to the Brazilian Embassy and the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States for this generous donation today. The donation of 2,000 test kits and 1,000 swabs have indeed increased our capacity to test at the Ezra Long Laboratory. And um, our team members are there with us and they are very happy. And this will assist us greatly in this fight, this global fight for us to combat COVID-19. So once again, thank you and we welcome further collaboration with the OECS Commission and the Brazilian Embassy. Nancy Francis, Executive Director of the ON King EU Hospital there. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.